Ladies and gentlemen, I do not own any of the freaking audio or any of the pictures that you see. These pictures are owned by everyone who has the right to actually have them, along with the people who actually are in the pictures. So for anyone who is actually frowned upon or sad about this, why don't you go to the bastard named Slappy? Because he is right here right now saying he's ready to make you his slave, you biatch. Hello everyone, and this is Girls of Goosebumps Season 3 slash Part 3, where I basically tell you about all of the girls who have been acting and been seen in the stupid Goosebumps freaking TV series. Oh, anyways, let's get started with the first one that started it all. So, this one is, this just started in the first stupid Season 3 episode. A shocker of, oh, sorry, a shocker on Shock Street, and it happened in 1997. And I think I might have seen this because the worst part is that I remember seeing Monster Blood, and then all of a sudden I remember a Tarantulas thingy and all that stuff. Ah, whatever. I just remember this one was kind of part of it too. I don't remember. I. Well, anyways, when Aaron's special effects whiz father gives she and her friend marty the first tickets to a new theme park ride I think they have won the jackpot however when the ride breaks down midway through things go things quickly go from bad to worse well i do have to admit it did go back to worse and well since it's basically been out for so many years now 17 I can just say the ending is that it turns out she was nothing but a freaking robot. Yeah, her, Aaron and Marty were just both freaking robots and they were just testing out the ride together. And there has been at least two or three of them that was actually like that. But the weird part is that those robots eventually got intelligence and killed the, or did something to the Wiz father, the special effects Wiz father. Well, anyways, the person who played Aaron, that's the person that we actually will look at. Her name is Brooke Nevin, and it's amazing that I couldn't really pinpoint what she looks like because, well, yeah, I mean, she looks different. Well, she doesn't look that different, but she looks different. The real crazy thing has to be the fact of what she played in like midway it seems that two years later she actually was rachel from animorphs wow yeah she that's what the thing that she should have actually have been talked about on because apparently she played in animorphs as rachel even though it doesn't say it on here maybe she didn't play maybe it just said something but it seems like she might have played rachel in Animorphs. If not, then, well, you know how freaking Google search is. The fact that they're like, oh, we have so many things to show you. And it seems like Rachel, she most likely played Rachel. But anyways, yeah, she came, she's a December baby. Oh, Canada. Her middle name is Candice. And she's best known for Infestation in 2009. I know. Oh, I'll always know what you did last summer of 2006 and Breakout Kings, which... Durr. So, yeah, that's basically all we really need to know about her. And I think she actually might have played Rachel in Animorphs. It's kind of weird that they don't even have it labeled on here. Oh, The Comebacks. She was in The Comebacks? Oh, yeah, I hated that movie. That movie sucked. The movie was so horrible, it sucked. I always, I have it in freaking never watch again list. That's how messed up it is. Let me just check to make sure. Yep, she played as Rachel. Mm-hmm. And she was also in Are You Afraid of the Dark? Tales of Bigfoot Rig. That's about it. All right, cool. Let's go to the next one. And the next one is... My best friend is invisible. Excuse me. 
Sam's best friend Roxanne dis that is determined to capture footage of a ghost on videotape and she drags Sam along with her on a visit to a local haunted house. However, things become spooky when it appears they have a they actually found a new ghost. Uh, I would have actually have written it like this. However, things become spooky when the ghost followed Sam home and he turns his life upside down. Does that sound much better than what they just wrote on there? Doesn't it sound better? Well, since... So, since... We have Darlene Irwin, who played as Roxanne, and it looks like she is a childhood actor, maybe? No, it looks like she actually voiced Anna Green Gables in 2000. I remember that. I was on PBS. Hmm. And she also was featured in there. Wow. And she was also in Cadet Kelly. Hmm. And I think that's about it. Besides Fast Food High. And that's about it. Huh. She was Felicity King in Anne Green Gables. And it seems that she went from being a childhood actor into being a voice actor. Yeah, so there's really no pinpointing on exactly what she looks like. At least I have this picture, even though that's not actually from the episode itself. But at least you guys can tell what she looked like back then. <clears throat> So, I think it's only fair I actually talk about their teacher. And their teacher was played by Vicky Papavus. Papavus. And it looks like she's an actress. And she played in Elevated, Cypher, and Saw 6 in 2009. Wow. I thought she was actually decent to at least show, so... Yeah, why not? I mean, not fair that you guys are like, oh, well, where is she? I want to look at what the new. Chances are, just by looking at the kid herself, I think chances are she actually would have grown up to be a fine young woman. <laughs> I know I said I should just stop doing that, but uh, well, it's kind of funny. All right, anyway, so you have... The next one is The House of No Return. I definitely know I didn't watch this one. But anyways, Rob, actually I think I might have watched this because I kind of remembered the ending. I remember the two stupid idiots that are like, Oh, welcome to our home. Yes. <laughs> well, anyways, Robbie, Nathan, and, yeah, and Lori wanted a new kid in town, Chris, to join their group, Danger Incorporated. Their initiation ritual entitles spending an hour in a possibly haunted house. But Chris refused to. So the, the group decided to make him do it. Or technically they made him dupe. Yeah, they duped him into doing it. Yeah, it's a funny episode. Just the fact of what happens in the end is just the fact of, well, he was able to sneak out and save himself. But, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, he basically made a deal with the ghosts that you're like, there are three kids outside. If you let me go, they'll come in and you can take them instead of me. And they're like, okay, that, that sounds awesome. Okay, we can do it. Okay. <laughs> and basically that's what happened is that they got taken. Yeah, they took them and, mm-hmm, so... Yep, that sucks for you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so everyone got taken, and now... One second, let me just... Sadly, there is no picture of Lori or Lauren Annis, who played as her, and she also played a role one year later called My Own Country. So, sadly, she's a child actor. There's nothing I can do. This speed bumps happen. I still like to say, whoever's a total idiot who was like, oh, they want pictures of her on internet? I don't think so. Yeah, she's not that important, you know. 
What's important is just send Slappy in there. Slappy should be all over the place. Or put the logo. The logo is always the best. Yes, logo. And yeah, that's what just basically happened. Well, anyways, let's go to the next episode. Don't go to sleep. I remember seeing this book when I was seven. I think, yeah. Yeah. That was interesting. The fact that you have a yeah, you have a dude in sleeping in a bed, and I think there's something about a closet. And it didn't even have to deal with the closet. Heck, I think the artwork sucked. It, I mean, if this episode entitles anything to the actual play of the freaking episode, then yeah, that artwork sucks. But anyways, Matthew Amsterdam is tired of being just a kid. While his siblings have all the fun. So one night... He one night decided, you know, I would say one night he decided to go up to the attic to sleep. When he wakes up, he's in another dimension where, I have to flip the page because they're stupid, everyone treats him like an adult. To complicate things, a pair of men in black began pursuing him. Wow, that's crazy, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, I'm happy that men in black couldn't be sued. Or vice versa. Because, well, yeah. The Men in Black that happened in... <laughs> there's too many Men in Black. I, seriously, there's too many Men in Black. The Men in Black who... <coughs> men in Black who enforced no cosplay on a certain day. You also have the Men in Black who kill lots of space aliens and stuff. And then you have the Men in Black who does other crap. And this Men in Black who... Round up kids that don't supposed to be in that that don't supposed to be in their dimension, all that crap. I mean, seriously. Well, anyways, what we came here is by his little sister. I think, I think this had to be a little sis, not a little sister. Sorry, big sister. And it looks like he actually has two big sisters. So why not take a look at them both? So one of them was born. No, I mean, sorry, one of them was Amanda Zamprogna. Yeah, Amanda Zamprogna. And she actually played Pam Amsterdam. And it looks like the last thing she was ever in was in Fall, The Price of Silence. And you also have the other sister who is... Oh, I'm taking... Who is Kathleen Lackey. And she apparently is still up and running actually and chances are these might be some let me see to make sure no I didn't say if she's from Canada or not so I'm not sure but I don't remember any of them holy crap she was in the Sailor Moon wow she was in freaking Sailor Moon she played as Birdie who the freak is Birdie one second let me check oh no picture what are you an idiot I don't know who Birdie is. Dang, you dumb, stupid hooker. <laughs> uh, sorry for anyone who's like, what is he talking about? But yeah, she played as Laura Amsterdam. And it looks like to me that this might actually be the mom because... No, the other one looks like she has to be the mom because she was 1979. So, 1979. Hmm. No, no, she, that's perfect. This one... On the other hand, what she played in George Shrinks? Holy frick. Let's see what she played in George Shrinks, shall we? Let's see. George Shrinks. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Perdita Shrinks. Man, I. it's been so long. It's been so long. Please tell me you have a picture. Oh, my gosh. You have no picture. Why the hell? I could kick all you. I'll kill you all. Ah. Oh, anyways. Mm, I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, I was checking to see how far the rabbit hole goes. And it looks like she went to 1982. So, hmm. I don't know. I can't tell which one's which. But anyways, since they're, hmm, I'm not sure. They, yeah, their things are not really that good. I mean. They don't have a picture. They don't get promoted. There's nothing really there. I mean, geez. 
And worst of all, I can't even find them within the whole entire freaking episode. And because I don't want to get freaking screwed over like that R.L. Stein guy, or if he is R.L. Stein, who basically got flagged for all the freaking episodes he put up, even though you have to do admit, if he writ the books, how the frick are you going to flag all his episodes that he put of Goosebumps? If he actually really is R.L. Stein, even though given it would figure he would have asked nicely to Hub, hey, can I post them? But since they he didn't, he basically has another one where he actually is posting up stuff. So, I don't know. I think he could be the real R. Stein since he did do the... Oh, well, whatever. All right, next episode, which is Click. When the remote control he ordered arrives, Self discovers that, as well as electrical appliances, it also controls the world around him. However, this newfound control provides addictive proves addictive and soon Seft is abusing it mm. well I can tell you one thing there was a movie called click and it does freaking do that doesn't it yeah it does freaking do that mm. yeah it does <laughs> uh, well <clears throat> like I said in the previous ep previous episode Tabitha Lupin place as Jamie Gold in this episode you already saw here it is just in case yeah so yeah she played as his sister I think yeah he plays as a sister so yeah and as for the thing itself I forgot what happens I think it's I don't remember it was a bad ending or something if I'm correct he actually might have gave it to someone else or he just been completely addictive and continued to use the stupid remote as an idiot. Of course, I'm not sure, you know. I mean, I think it might have broke. But hey. Mm. Alright. <clears throat> Next up is an old story. This, this freaking episode. I could swear this came as a DVD slash VHS release. A exclusive because an old story I remember for a fact that it never showed up on TV whatsoever and it was basically packed together with the bride of a living dummy that's one real reason why people actually rented it is just to see an old story because bride of a living dummy actually did show on TV they did do that as for an old story no Oh, anyways, let's get on, get right into it, right? So, Tom and John are surprised when their strange aunt, Dahila, 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 arrives to look after them when th their parents are on vacation. Their surprise turns to shock, though, when she realizes, well, sorry, when they realize she, oh, realize what she has in store for them. And oh my gosh, dude, really. I have to admit one thing is that, yeah, I, didn't I, I forgot if I actually posted up what I had to say about this episode. But at least you guys get to hear it now. And anyone who actually is really actually watching this and wants to hear me rant all over about this episode, hmm, I might actually wrote it. Yeah, I written it down. That's what I did. I put it on Tumblr. Yeah, that's what I did. Well, anyways, for anyone who actually wants to rehear or wants to see it, all you have to do is just write down below, hey, I would like to see what you have to say about this episode. Yeah. But anyways, just the idea that you have old ladies and they want to marry... Well, they want to marry someone. And basically, the auntie is making her... Making them older, actually old age... So they can marry them, which is interesting, though. Just the fact of, so you're telling me you want to marry old people, but yet you want to use young boys to turn old so they can do it, which is kind of like, okay, isn't that kind of lazy? And besides, is that like some weird messed up fetish or you want to have men with I would say they might be nine years old. So men with at least a four, 
fourth grade to intelligence and heck they won't even have a reason to want sex so it's kind of like yeah no they basically just want some guy to die off with and it's kind of like yeah ugh. so at least the good news is that it's not the whole man that's creepy as frick you have old ladies who want to take away those freaking <laughs> oh anyways in this one there's really no girls except for a few and well I definitely think you don't want to see the old ladies yeah we know that for a minute you don't want to see the old ladies I would basically check out the store helper I mean store worker and it looks like she's not in much things anymore maybe she's in a little bit but it seems like she actually is married now Aviva Aviva Amor which now she's Aviva Amor Ostrof which is kind of like yeah I rather not even care about what she is was still yeah you guys don't want to see the old lady but I do have to admit one of the old ladies is kind of cute yeah I will admit that hey 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 hey, hey don't look like me like that don't look at me like that I didn't see that as a kid. I actually saw it like three years ago, I think. That's when I actually saw the episode. It was three years ago. So, <clears throat> technically, this should actually be in the whole special. Ep yeah, this should have been a special episode of Girls of Youth Moms. But, oh, uh, well. They do try to at least say they did show this on TV. Well, anyways, next up is the Barking Dog, which I do remember, and that's some creepy damn cover. I remember that as a creepy damn cover. But anyways, the Barking Dog. After moving to a new house, Cooper starts to hear unusual barking noises in a nearby woods and seeks, I'm sorry, and sees with threatening dogs, which no one ever, no, sorry, which no one else can. With the help of his new friend Fergie, mm, Fergie, mm, you jerk, <laughs> he discovers a secret which could be the end of him. Which I haven't seen this episode. I might come back and check this out. <clears throat> but anyways, the person who played Fergie is Jennifer Martini. Hmm. And Jennifer Martini is none other than a freaking childhood actor yes childhood actor meaning i most likely can't find her freaking face on internet i'll at least put and show right now what she looks like as on goosebumps if i can find a stupid picture and it looks like she actually was featured in little bear and Hmm, I can't tell what episode she, I mean, who she was in the episode. So, yeah. But she was featured in Little Bear. And I did, yeah. One second, though. Well, here's good news. Yeah, you guys are seeing what she looks like. That's good. And that's basically all that's in this whole entire thing. Maybe when I come back with... I think with 3.5, I'll talk about the moms and, and etc. Okay, next up is One Day at Horrorland Part 1 and Part 2. I guess I most likely will put, read them both, read the, both the bios together. So I'm able to just focus on Lizzie after we're done. The Morris family become lost during a road trip and they stumble upon an amusement park called Horrorland. The kids, Lizzie and Luke, love the place at first, but soon realize it is more sinister than it seems. Holy frick. <laughs> and in part two, the Morris family desperate try to escape from Horrorland, but the monsters are, deter uh, are determined to keep them. And Lizzie Morris she was played by Heather Brown, and sadly, Heather Brown is a childhood actor. The last thing you can see, even though you guys will be like, ew, is Dear America Dreams in the Golden Country, 1999. Yeah. 
Or at least the good news is that she was 17 years old when did that one, so... Mm, barely legal. <laughs> oh, man, Steve Harvey. My gosh, Steve Harvey. So, Amanda Morris. Well, one thing I can tell you about this Horrorland one is... It was very interesting when watching it. It was very, very interesting. I do have to say that. Wow, they have the freaking TV... Not TV show, sorry. They have the freaking... <clears throat> video game and then there's the stupid dummy bastard yeah they have lots of they have the freaking video game at least i can find i can find it at least that's the good news i can find her on there but there's like the video game <laughs> yeah that's one thing that freaking horror land did is that horror land went from video game into another video game incarnation, into actually a book series on its own called Escape from Horrorland. And for people who didn't know, it started in 2000, I would say 2011, all the way to now. Well, not, sorry, not all the way to now. It ended like at least a few years ago. So it was really a hyped thing. It was very, very hyped. Yeah, and you also had freaking Slappy being a good guy in one of the books. Yeah, holy frick. And, of course, you know, there was, like, at least two others where he actually was like, You'll be my slave. I want you to be my slave, woman. <laughs> that would be funny, you know, a triple X book with freaking Slappy having a girl being her. <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. That would be crazy as frick. <laughs> Oh, man, that would be messed up. The parents would be like, what you doing in there? Uh, nothing. I told you to rub faster. <laughs> oh, 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 my gosh, dude, that would be so, so messed up. That would be so freaking messed up. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Slappy, the dominatrix coming soon. <laughs> oh, freaking damn. Oh, Oh my gosh. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh man, that had to be good. That was good. That was a good one. I enjoyed that. That was just too funny. All right. The next episode. Oh man, dude. Dude, that's just too funny. But the next episode was none other is none other than the haunted house game. I saw that one. That was weird as freak. But Hey, at least we got good news. It's not going to be a child actor report. That's the good news. So, anyways, when friends Nadine and Jonathan, oh my gosh, no, are exploring an old deserted mansion, they find a board game. Jimunji, Sathora. <laughs> That's the only two video games. We don't do board games that are creepy. Even though Goosebumps actually did have a board game on their own as well and i actually saw it on yeah i saw it in stores lots of times and heck even when i spent the night over someone's house they actually had the goosebumps board game under their bed mm. brave one isn't she intrigue nadine opened it and they find themselves transported inside the game and must fight to escape from it yeah, I remember. I think it was kind of stupid. It was stupid setup. Nowadays, it'll actually look very, very cool. But for right now, mm. just for the heck of it, I'm going to actually show two people. Right now is Laura Vanderhoot, which she had a W when she actually was a childhood actor, and now she put it from a W to a V. And holy frick, holy crap! Vanderhoot, the girl who played Kara from Supergirl in Smallville. Holy frick. <laughs> well, I'll be darned. Well, of course, if you're watching, I would like to say, if you're going to say, hey, that's not right. How dare you use my picture? I dare you to super freaking fly over here and stop me. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. I just hope you're not that pissed off that I'm actually doing this. But, dude, are you serious? You actually was in Goosebumps, and you actually... Dude, that is just shocking as frick. 
my gosh of course here's the before and after one hopefully i do have an after if not then blame the stupid bastards who are like you don't want to see her you don't want to see pictures of her you just want to see all the pictures and all the stuff <laughs> which ooh i hate you you bastard <laughs> Sorry guys, I saw a picture of Slappy staring at me and I just had to tell him how much I hate him. That bastard. Kick his freaking ass. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I really truly hate that bastard. Alright, anyways, another one I would like to show is the girl from... Which I don't really know. I don't know exactly. But yeah, it just says girl and she doesn't really have a name. So anyways... This girl, which she didn't give a name, her name is Laura Morell, and she was is an actress best known for Shepherd's Story 2002, Summer's End, and the Sandy Bottoms Orchestra. Hopefully, I most likely will be able to find her on there too. But if I don't, well, I don't really want to look at that freaking bastard's face again. Sorry, guys. Seriously, I hate him. I hate him. He freaking sucks. I hate that bastard. Just staring at me and all that crap. My gosh, you suck. I hope you get pimp slapped by that hooker you paid. <laughs> oh, man. Let me just check this out. Next up is The Perfect School Part 1 and Part 2. Sadly, I can't really recall any girl in there. But it looks like there is a girl, so let me just read the bio. Did I read the bio? Oh, yeah, I read the bio last time. Well, anyways, mm, yeah, I'll read part one and part two and then hope that, mm, okay. Well, anyways, when he pulls yet another prank on his little brother, Brian's parents decide to send him to a summer school, which claims to be perfect. After being there a few days, though, he begins to speak suspect something sinister is afoot oh my gosh must be a smelly foot too boom, boom. Hey. <laughs> yeah she's on this one too thank goodness okay we're good <clears throat> part two brian tries to find out exactly what is going on at the school but what he discovers may prove to be more shocking than anything he could have imagined so, the interesting fact about this one is just, uh, you know, it's just the usual thing, you know. They send their kid off, they trade their kid and gave him a clone that doesn't have any sense of being in crap. And then they think they fix their kid, which it turns out that they just have a bunch of kids prisoner, which is kind of like, okay, so you clone the kid so you can have... A perfect kid sent home with them and then you have the real kid in the freaking jail cells you know how messed up that is <clears throat> someone has to just call child services and guess what you're busted as frick man yeah and then the whole conspiracy of oh my gosh if this is my son then who are you I am your son so it's basically will turn out into now you have identical twins one nice and one bad or maybe they both will be good because, well, he's now in the freaking jail cell and he's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. <clears throat> well, anyways, uh, let's see. I think we might not actually have someone who is, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, that's his mom. Okay, well. Sorry, guys, it looks like that's only his mother, and I don't think you want to look at his mother, a.k.a. Paula O'Connor, and she actually was played by Ann Turnbull. I'm not going to show her because, well, <clears throat> that's only in the <clears throat> three part, yeah, it's part 3.5. That's the only time I'll ever show extra characters or moms and dads because, well, you guys are not into the whole she's older than you and she actually is ugh. yeah man yeah well anyways next up is wolf werewolf skin part one 
And Werewolf Skin Part 1 is just basically a werewolf. It's a freaking werewolf story. And they have a girl in there too. And Alright, let's just begin, shall we? So, when the budding photographer Alex arrives to his aunt's and uncle's house in the country, he decides to enter the magazine contest competition. However, he lives... Oh, sorry. However, what lives in the surrounding woods may be too scary, even for Alex. Yeah, that was just interesting. I mean, I enjoy. One thing I truly enjoy, too, <clears throat> besides, yeah, I, I haven't read the book. Yes, one thing. I haven't read this book, but I do have to say the werewolf episodes were very, very good. I enjoy them. They are very, very good, and... I think they deserve to, oh yeah, I mean, technically they are still around via hub, but I do have to admit, if they made a two-pack of it, and heck, maybe not even put the label on it, just have the freaking showing of them, because, well, you know what happens, basically if I put it in the house, and then sadly, I have my new sense, my extra sense, that freaks out every single time it sees it and basically says evil evil heck even right now my sense is freaking out because of what's going on you know so yeah it's like yeah so <clears throat> let's read part two shall we and then we can continue on with this all right part two is alex is determined to figure out what is going on in Wolf Creek and is horrified to discover that his aunt and uncle may be the werewolves he has been terrorizing oh who have been terrorizing the neighborhood the community not neighborhood but either way it's the same thing yeah it's true and it's kind of interesting how it goes just the fact of the skin is alive as well and if you keep the skin away from them from them They'll turn back into normal, which you do have to admit, that's a quite good twist to the actual werewolf story. It is. It's quite a good one. Yeah, the sad part is that it turns out there's even more werewolves than he thought. There could be even more werewolves than just those two. Yeah, which we find out in the shocking ending, where he actually did take a picture and what's worse is that the person that's in the picture actually walked in the door with her. And what's even crazier is just the fact of she made a funny reference saying, I don't buy much. Dun, 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 boom. Well, anyways, the person, which is the girl interest, is Hannah Stoneman. And Hannah Stoneman was played by Tara... Vanessa. Now she's calling herself Vanessa, but back in the day, she was actually called Tara Vanessa Koalin. Koalink. Yeah, Koalik. Well, anyway, she changed her name, and oh, holy frick, she also was in Animorphs as well. Two freaking stars was in Animorphs, and it looks like she was also in Goosebumps series. Oh, I thought she was Goosebumps series one, but it looks like she was, what they're trying to say is that she also worked in a series called Real Kids Real Adventure, and she also worked in freaking Animorphs. What the frick? And of course, there's so many other ones like she was in The Wrong Turn 4, Bloody Beginnings, Hurt in 2003, Five Girls. That looks creepy as frick. So anyways, let's just see what she was in Animorphs. That's one thing I'm... Come on, where is it? Melissa Chapman. Melissa Chapman? Hmm, I don't remember a Melissa Chapman. Sorry. All right. Yeah, I don't really miss a Chapman, but I do have to say by the look of her, she has become a drop-dead gorgeous. My gosh. Yeah, I would have to admit, even though all the other dumb idiots basically were like, Oh my gosh, the is no more. 
Yeah, we just did it just to get the money to go to college. Yeah. College rules. Monster Rancher. <laughs> college rules. Monster Rancher. <laughs> oh, man. Sadly, this picture is quite horrible. I'll admit, this picture is quite horrible. And, heck, she actually is listed as a villain in <clears throat> some kind of Wikipedia page. Hmm. Yeah, so anyways, yeah, she is quite adorable, Melissa Chapman. I know that the principal was named Chapman. I remember that. The principal's name was Chapman, but... Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me just make sure I put this in here. My goodness. So, yeah, I mean... Melissa Chapman... <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember her one bit, though. I don't remember one freaking bit. But anyways, yeah, she was a bad guy. <laughs> she was a bad guy in this one. And they made sure that, you know, that she's a bad guy. But she never really did anything that crazy. She was just nothing but that person that you know. <clears throat> and you know, in usually goes goosebumps freaking things. That you have, like, some guy and some girl and then... They go on an adventure together, try to figure out a mystery. And, of course, you have this turn of events that it turns out the boy or the girl is basically screwed. Yeah, this time it's the girl again, just like in freaking Attack of the Mutants. <laughs> but not that bad. Yeah, Attack of the Mutants, you had a freaking guy who wants to be a girl for some reason and tricked him. <laughs> like, yeah, it's kind of messed up if you think about it. <clears throat> Next up is... Awesome ants. I remember this crazy thing. After witnessing an S S after witnessing an ant infestation at an ice cream parlor, Dave decides to make ants the topic of his science project at school. He shouldn't have done that. Did you know about that boy that made freaking worms his project? <laughs> However, after he and his friend Ben feed them real food, the ants grew yeah, it should be the ants grew to an, a gigantic size instead of the ants grow to a gigantic size. <clears throat> yeah, whoever wrote this is kind of messed up. I'm sorry, but still. I think what we really need to check out is freaking his sister. I remember it was his sister who was the one who should be noticed in this Let's see, and of course his sister, well, it looks like his sister was in, well, sorry, his sister was Michelle, played by Michelle Mellon, Mollen, sorry, Michelle Mollen, and she was in Degrassi, The New Generation, I think that show sucked, it should never been born, and it was in 2001 or something, and also Cries of Laura, Lorena, sorry, 2002. After that, she doesn't have any other record of doing crap. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean... Mm, seriously, man. It's like, dude. Like, what the freaking hell, man? My gosh. I swear. Okay, so it's just nothing but... Yep. I hate you, you bastard. Yeah, I saw his face again. Ah, oh, come on. Why you guys want to show his face all the damn time? He's no freaking damn girl. I just wanted to see freaking Andrea, Andrea Warren. But you're like, Slappy, Slappy, you wanted to see Slappy, don't you? And I'm like, seriously? I think I wanted to see the damn girl. It's like, dang. <laughs> Unless it's a triple X thing. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I would have loved to see the Triple X thing happen, but we know for a fact there'll never be a freaking Triple X thing. If the Triple X thing happens, it's going to be freaking creepy as hell. <clears throat> of course, like I said before, let me just say this one more time, is that Julian Zinman, the person who played her, Andrea... Sorry, Andriana... Benny dear. <clears throat> yeah, she played in another one. So it's not like I should continue and review her. So yeah, she's not needed. 
the real person that we should look at is none other than freaking Katie. Yeah, her sister in the TV show. And her sister was Katie Zinman, and the person who played that was freaking Sophie Bennett, which I think Sophie Bennett is a no-show, right? I think Connie Zinman would be cool to look at, too, just because. Canadian actress, singer, last thing you can see her in is Salem Witch Trials that was in the History Channel in 2002, and that's basically it, and she is born on my half-birthday. A year before it was my half-birthday. <clears throat> well, anyways, <laughs> Slappy wants his bride, Mary Ellen. That's really messed up. Dude, you could write something better than this. I would basically say, uh, let's see, two sisters goes to a performance, a ventriloquist performance. And <clears throat> they went to the backstage to see the dude because the younger sister wanted to. Quote, unquote, sister wanted to. Unknown to them, he was willing to part with his ventriloquist dummy. So, you know, Tommy is Tommy. Yeah, ventriloquist dummy. As they come home, they eventually find that the ventriloquist dummy is more than they bargained for. Even returning home, even returning back to give the ventriloquist his ventriloquist dummy, they find that it is even harder. Well, anyways, whatever. I don't give a freaking flying. We'll be back out of these messages. Sadly, Sophie Bennett is a childhood actor, kind of. And at least we do have Warren Widow. And Warren Widow, even though I'm not going to freaking try to look for those bastards. Yeah, I'm tired of looking at his damn face. I'm sorry, people, but he's creepy as frick. <laughs> that is what I'm saying. He's creepy as frick. And I would like to say... I don't know what they're planning on doing in the freaking movie. If they're going to bring the movie version of Slappy, that's going to be freaky as hell. And if they don't do it and bring the old version of Slappy, the ones that we've seen in books all the times, well, yeah. And just because they're like, oh my gosh, you got to love Slappy. You got to love him every single day. You know, I'm basically looking at the voice of Slappy right now, and it looks like he was an actor and art director. I know this is Girls of Goosebumps, but I think it's important to actually look at this right quick. And that's funny. It looks like he, yeah, he not only was the voice of Slappy for two out of the three episodes, he also was a Piranha Man and also was a reptilian creature hmm. so I would love to see who played slapping the third one I bet I actually said that previously so uh, whatever but yeah the two girls I'm not gonna look for them I mean screw this screw looking at his damn face either show the person or I'm not doing crap I'm not bullying crap screw you screw you I'm not doing this crap anymore screw your I'm not going to do that damn crap. Well, anyways, everyone, I'm back. And after freaking saying that. Hmm. Yeah, it would be an idea to actually look who actually paid baby grace on here. Which they don't really show it. And chances are they most likely won't actually have grace listed. Yeah, so we don't even know who Baby Grace is, but let me just read anyways. This is strained peas, if I didn't say it. When Nicholas' parents come home with his new baby sister, Grace, he makes an effort to bond with her. However, after a series of bizarre occurrences, he comes to suspect that the baby is not human. <laughs> I think they have the freaking mom here, which other than that, there's really no one to really report on. And the mom looks quite cute, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, she looks kind of cute, you know. But I'm not going to show her. Because she's only an extra. Quote, unquote, extra. 
<clears throat> Next up is Say Cheese and Die Again. This is the freaking thing where Ron Gosling was playing as freaking Greg in the first place, and now they replaced him with Patrick Thomas, who is most likely a childhood actor. Given that, <clears throat> in order to prove his teacher that his story about the evil camera is true and earn a better grade, earn a better grade, Greg breaks into the warehouse again and finds it, unaware that the device only brings even more trouble than it la did last time. Yeah, that was a good episode, I suppose. Sherry yet again, which I think they replaced her with someone exotic. And looks like, yeah, she's a childhood actor. Last thing you can see her is in 1997 when Pretty Th Ones Sleep. Sorry everyone who wants to look for more pi look at more pictures, but I say screw that. They basically have become nothing but freaking lovers. <laughs> freaking lovers. Oh, let me go back right quick. I need to go back one more time because I forgot to write in this thing. But anyways, yeah, dude, I mean, if you try to look up anything Goosebumps, you know what you're going to find? Slappies. <laughs> Sorry, people, but dude, I'm already having freaking senses of crap, but you having to freaking continue on with, oh, look, oh, look, oh, look, it's Slappy. You guys love him. Like, dude, stop freaking showing that bastard. My gosh. <clears throat> well, anyways, in the trilogy part, I mean, trill, la, trilogy part one, two, and three, it's just the same person, Jessica Walters. She was first aimed in the first episode. In the second episode, she actually was there to find the game at the end of it. <clears throat> and then the third one was basically going to destroy the game and then find out, oh crap, his little brother went in the game we should go after him and she was afraid that she'll get a piggy face like in the first one which sadly yes she was money hungry get over it oh yeah i don't think i need to do the stupid thing right there so yeah i'm gonna skip all the freaking oh let's read it because it's the whole click to see full summary and i'm like ah screw that well, anyways, the first one was blank. The second one was strike three, you're dead or some kind of crap. And the next one is escape from Carlsville. <clears throat> it's sad. I mean, if you have Carl over there, Carl should at least have his own bio. I mean, damn. Give him his freaking bio. What the frick, man? <clears throat> well, anyways, last one is freaking teacher's pet. And teacher's pet... Basically, it's on a class trip to the woods. Becca becomes convinced that something sinister is going on. And soon, she and her friend Benji finds themselves beset, uh, beset? Okay, fine. Beset by horrifying creatures determined to devour them. And, of course, <clears throat> Becca was played by Michelle Reese. And Sally Basel Reese is a childhood actor. Am I right or am I right? Ooh, ooh, dang. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our first ever dead actress slash dead childhood actress. She died from mini men gen gen it's a Ingenious, whatever freaking crap it is, is a crappy freaking disease. She was on her way to a promising acting career. She had worked with actors such as Navy Campbell, Harlan Williams, Katie Seagal, and Selma Hayek. Her parents divorced when she was very young, and her mom remarried and changed Michelle's last name to Reese. Michelle's only sibling was born six months. And it continues on and stuff. Ooh, that's the first time ever. Yeah. Ooh. 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 Well, that's the last one. Wow, it looks like, yeah, season three had the biggest forever thing to stamp packed. 
I guess I could check out what freaking Martha is doing, aka Ashley Taylor, but Ashley Taylor is none other than a childhood actor, and she actually voiced in Metabots, which let's see what she voiced in. Also, Brother Bear, too, like the third person, and then Green Gables as Carrot Top. My goodness. Okay, and a boss. She was Miss Nay. Hmm. Maybe she was like that red-headed girl, or maybe she was like that sidekick. I don't know. I'll check out the teacher too, Mrs. Crandall. Mrs. Crandall looks okay, and she was in Saw Three apparently. Mm, she looks okay, but she she aged. I mean, well, she was playing as a teacher, so what? Anyways, oh man, jeez, jeez, yeah, didn't see that coming, but yeah, there you go, there's season three, aka episode three, part three of Girls of Goosebumps, stay tuned for season four, I think there will be a season four, and most likely I'll do this, do that a few later, because Slappy is freaking pissing me off. And setting off my senses to make it as if danger is afoot. Well, anyways, I am done. Have a good day. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. And for anyone who actually did enjoy the character or basically liked Michelle in Teacher's Pet, at least give honor and I don't know. I don't know what you could do in this one. I guess you can go to Teacher's Pet on youtube and just say rest in peace just to honor her because well man stupid meningitis i think that's how to say it meningitis damn just damn <laughs> triple x i told you to rub faster <laughs> ah you were my slave you rub faster now or I shall kill you. Actually, no, Slappy doesn't kill. He, he does something. I just don't think he kills. Yeah, that's one thing. He doesn't kill. But he does something. <laughs> yeah, he just doesn't kill. Big wuss. <laughs>